Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again and uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys uh, some basics and some things in uh, Maya and especially using fluids. Uh, so we'll be basically doing these two examples, one which will be like this one and I'll be explaining a couple of things along the way in doing something like this. And the other one would be this, so kind of like a character you know on fire sort of an effect but I will the one thing that I will say is that the Maya fluids engine and the fluids like solver is very old and they haven't updated in a very long while so I'm, I'm, I'm really not a big fan of like using it. I don't personally use it on my projects I prefer to use like Phoenix FD or fume effects mostly but just for the understanding purposes and f uh, for people who are just getting started using Maya, I think it's a great place to start and you know we can do some things with it so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, take a look at the basics first and then we're gonna see how it goes from there okay so I am using Maya 2018 right now so what I'm gonna do and I apologize for my voice I just got flu like last night and for me it gets worse you know uh, it lasts about a week so I'm kind of like in the beginning stage, but you can already tell from my voice. So uh, no problem. I'm just try to I'll try my best to you know explain this stuff. So uh, for this first example, what I did was I did some text and I did like a simulation and then I cached it and I you know uh, emitted like fluids off of it. So what I'm gonna do is go into Maya and create text. So here, and I'm just going to go into type and type in like effects maniac or whatever you want. You know. And no matter what font it is, just uh, make sure to go modify center pivot and uh, make it like zero or just center it to the grid and make it small. Hit R basically to make it small and then hit W to you know, move it. So once we have our text here, um, make sure to center it on the grid. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them like separate objects. So what I'm gonna do is select all these faces, double click on this and go into modeling, mesh and separate. Um, once again, or we can just like extract it, yep. And then same thing, hit G to basically repeat the last command. So select, hit G, it'll extract. So G and all the way till the end here. And we don't need to extract the last one because it already is like an object. But the problem is the pivot points are like, you know, in this uh, different positions. So what I'm gonna do is select them all and I'm going to go into modify and center pivot. So what happens is now, each of the pivot is on their own like center of the objects so what I'm gonna do is move them all and I want to rotate them uh, you know according to their own axis so right now if I do it yeah it's just completely fine but if it doesn't for some reason you can just hold control alt and right click and make sure it is component usually normally it's on like object so or world if it is like control uh, control shift if it is on the world uh, control shift then sometimes I don't know but sometimes it'll just look like weird it will rotate the whole thing uh, but make sure it is on object uh, sorry component so that you get like the individual rotation of all these objects and letters so um, yeah so I just want to rotate them like individually a little bit you know just like just to make them look like random you know so kind of like this and yeah so now I'm just going to select them all and make them cloth so go to effects uh, end cloth and create end cloth so now we have the cloth but the thing is they're just going to eternity we want them to basically collide with this flow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the outliner and select the nucleus and make sure hit control a for the attributes make sure to turn on this option on the ground plane use plane so if I go back here and I play this you can see that they're colliding with the floor which is okay and it's only 120 frames which we which will be needing so 
uh, I'm uh, okay with the simulation so what I'm gonna do is cache this so that we can use it later for our fluids so what I'm gonna do is select them all or just if you don't even select you can go to cache Alembic cache and export all to Alembic so once you click on that and you get you make sure it's a time slider basically your whole timeline and you can like click on export all and you can go into a directory and like make a new folder for this like cache or something or whatever just name it and then name it like D or anything I don't care so it will basically export those frames um, you know as cache files so that like you can use it later as an object and it doesn't have to like calculate it over and over again so uh, we'll let that finish which is actually done so what I'm going to go and create a new scene so once we're in the new scene I'm just going to go into cache Olympic cache and click on import Olympic we'll go into the same folder you know, the cache and D and I'm going to import and I'll delete this uh, these things we actually actually may have a camera too so I'm just going to like delete it yeah so it basically exports everything right so yeah this is the thing nucleus we don't need it so we got our simulation now I want we want to emit some fluids off of this so what I'm gonna do is go into the fluids and 3d container and the container is basically the area which is used for the simulation so it's it's basically it's going to be roughly the size of your you know the, the area that you want to simulate so anything that is outside the container is not going to be calculated or anything so uh, this is basically your grid and if I preview this or if I select this first if I preview you can see by default we have this little emitter here which we can just select and you know it just it, it has to have something to emit smoke or fluids off of so it's basically there's a default emitter and we want to emit from those objects okay so what we can do is we can select all these objects and select the grid and uh, both of them are selected so what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna go into the fluids menu and I'm going to add edit contents and emit from object um, we haven't selected okay uh, maybe we have selected the emitter too so we can we can just select it and delete this emitter and select all the objects in the grid shift and going to add edit contents emit from object front shape not found what is this okay, we'll go back here select all of them and select this um, fluids and edit content emit from object now it is working okay so now if I play this you can see that we got some fluids you know emitting from object but it's very very low quality and why is that because our grid resolution is a uh, base resolution is very low so if I increase this and I go back make sure not to increase it like crazily so much maybe like 60 you can see that the cells are getting better and that's what necessarily increasing the resolution of the grid right so you can you can go into display and you can go to the boundary draw and you can say full so now you can see how the grid is looking right so this is like a you know cubic grid right now so what happens is like the more you increase the resolution the more smaller it will get and essentially the more quality you'll get so go back to display and I'll make it like reduced yeah so this is basically a grid so now if I if I play this you can see that we have a lot more quality but then the simulation is also taking a lot more time so that's the thing that you need to keep in mind and in these fluid simulations the key thing is actually finding the right value that works and you know getting the highest quality possible and you know at the same time optimizing the simulation times so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to bounding uh, or bottom by default and we can hide it too but for now we're gonna need it so you can see that some smoke is emitting off of it and uh, I need to like decrease this a little bit for the tutorial so maybe like 70 go back here and uh, see it is working as it should but then it's also when it hits the boundaries of the grid 
it just you know kind of collides with the boundaries of the grid so we can do something about that there's an option if you go down here it's called auto resize if you turn that on it will basically resize the simulation you know according to you know how far the smoke goes or you know each and every direction it goes which is actually a good thing sometimes you know so we'll keep that on auto resize and then the other thing is the most important thing here comes in the content details so right now the smoke is pretty white we can go into the lighting and turn on like self shadow so it will have like shadow to it and we can add a color to the light or anything you know we can do those things later also but you know for now just wanted to mention that and now you can see some smoke is emitting off of those letters but it's uh, there are some things the dynamics that we can change so what I'm going to do is I am going to go into the content details which is here and first off we have the density which is basically you know controlling the basically the smoke and how dense it is and you know so we can change that if you want like a thin very soft you know kind of smoke so we can we can decrease it and we can increase it to get a much more thicker result and the buoyancy is the most important thing here right now you see the smoke is rising up like really fast so if i decrease this it's basically controlling how fast the smoke goes if i make it like close to zero you can see that the smoke is barely rising and if you want it to come down then you can you can change it to a negative value or, and right now you'll see that the smoke will fall down you know so which which is actually what we want in this example so yeah you can you can basically see how it's looking and even in this example we've kind of did like the same thing so the smoke is like literally falling down with a lot of turbulence and stuff and we got some quality here so we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna explain that and maybe we'll make it like negative one and there's an option called dissipation which is basically how soon the smoke disappears so if I just like increase it to one you will see that the smoke will disappear like very fast see which sometimes is good we don't if you don't want the smoke to last very long but like as we see in this example uh, it does it does kind of disappear so maybe we'll make it make it like uh, not the buoyancy the dissipation to like 0.4 and there are some other options like you can add some noise to this make it a lot more noisier which you can probably see right now because we have got like less quality so what i'm going to do is increase the quality to like a hundred percent not percent just a hundred the value and yeah we got that basic sort of uh scene that example if you want to hide the grid you can hide it and um, if you want to do some other things, so there's another option called the velocity, which you can add some swirl, you know, some swirly sort of movement to the smoke, which will make it look better. And you can also add like noise to that swirl, which will make it like look random. So noise is basically like, you know, getting rid of all the, ra like the repetitions in the, in the, you know, texture of the smoke and making it a lot more random in different areas so it is actually like needed definitely because in nature like nothing is perfect so yeah um, I mean natural phenomenons like nothing are perfect so um, if you go into the turbulence turbulence is basically like the wind so it will basically swirl around just like in this example so it's like swirling around all over the place so yeah you can see that and if I if I've increased it right so if I go back and make sure every time you kind of like do a change to a value go back to the first frame so that updates and then play it so now you can see that smoke is definitely more swirly and moving around right and if you want to increase you can go back to the density and like you know increase the density of the smoke or you can go down into the shading and there's a transparency option so you can definitely like make it more thick or thin but you know in this case you want it to be like this much is enough and we definitely want to and there are some other options the speed and frequency uh, we definitely want to add some noise some more so now we can see that the smoke is like uh, these characters are falling off but the quality is less right so that's why we don't see a lot of detail 
but still you can see the movement and you know you can tweak these values and i hope you guys i mean get the the things that i'm saying the values and stuff you can also go into the autodesk website and get a very good and detailed information about all of these you know parameters and what each of each and every one of them do but i think these are the most important ones that like for this example that i've mentioned and um there's one more thing that we I've actually not done in this example, but I have done in this one is like fire. So fire is basically if you go into the contents method, there is a temperature which is off. If you set it to dynamic grid, then fire will also be emitted from this, which actually looks pretty cool in this example, I would say. So I'm, I'm going to leave it that way. But then fire also has its own options in the content details. So by going to temperature and yeah we have like the scale like you know so we can you can you can you can see that it's gonna it definitely making it more like you know smaller sort of fire and then you have things like buoyancy buoyancy we do want it to come down so you can you can set it to like a negative value so now the fire also will kind of uh you know fall down just like that you can see it actually looks pretty cool with this combination but the smoke needs to be a bit like you know dark so you go into the shading and click on the color and make sure that it's a little bit darker of a color so we can see the thing properly the fire and then we can increase the light or decrease or do whatever to make it make it look you know better but we definitely need a lot more quality you can see that we don't have enough so um yeah you can play around with the settings and get the the result we can also add some noise to the temperature so that the fire is kind of like you know random and kind of noisy um and yeah that's basically you know the basic things that you need to do to be able to kind of you know to find your own sort of example so it it it, it, it kind of like it it's different on different examples that you want to do you know if you're creating an explosion it, you need different you know uh, settings if you are like doing a fire or or whatever you know it's different on different like effects but yeah once you get the idea you can tweak them as you need them and uh, I want to increase the resolution to 200 and I want to do a sim and let's see how it looks. So um, the way to do that is, of course, you don't want to, I don't want you guys to sit here and wait. So what I'm going to do is go into display and go into the boundary, draw, set it to none so that we don't see the grid even. And uh, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to go back to the first frame and I'm going to do a play blast. So click on play blast. Make sure it's like 1280 by 720 scale is one hundred percent and play blast and uh, I'll wait for it to finish and once it's done I'm going to be back so the cache is done and uh, if I play this you can see that it looks it looks cool I mean we, we we have some quality smoke and fire but you can definitely do a lot more better so um, it was kind of like a basic very you know uh, very basic and very short tutorial on like Maya fluids um, and I hope you guys learned something from it and uh, you know based on the things that I've told you you can you can surely do do and do this example so this example you can see that that character is falling down you have smoke and fire emitting off of it which is basically the same thing and the character is animated and I got it off of Mioxmo so if you go there and it's uh, you can you can log in for free and you can choose a character in the characters and then you can you can choose an animation like dancing and it'll do and you can download the FBX and use it in Maya in any software you want so uh, that's basically it but uh, as I said in the beginning of this tutorial I do prefer using plugins especially Phoenix FD or something like Fume FX for this kind of things because they give you a lot more uh, you know 
you know, high quality simulations and a lot more better settings than this. But you know, it, this is something built into Maya, and you know, you can you can play around, and get some good results too. So, so this is basically it for today's tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and most importantly learned something from it. So, some of you were asking about some basics of like Maya dynamics and stuff, and I hope it it kind of got you started with uh, fluids inside of Maya. And uh, and I do want to thank you again for supporting my channel. I just reached like 1k subscribers, which I'm really, really grateful and excited for. And I try to be, you know, I try to make tutorials as much as possible. But, you know, I, I know that I'm not consistent. But I, as I always say, I try to be. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what matters. So um, uh, thank you again for subscribing to my channel. And, uh, you know, keep liking the videos, keep commenting, any questions, any ideas you might be having for the upcoming tutorials i'll try to do it and uh as always till next time enjoy working